Okay, mini training as requested by you guys last night is going to be on triggers. So, as I explained on the coaching call yesterday evening, triggers are everywhere. And bear in mind, we are like Pavlov's dogs. We are stimulus response beings. You see a red light, you hopefully stop. You hear a certain song, it brings back a memory of a time and a place. We work by association. You can reprogram and rewire your brain, but it does require time and effort. But what you need to be aware of is what are your triggers and what you can do about them. Okay, so on the simple sense, let's look at what we would call trigger foods or drinks. That tends to be something that if you start, you throw control overboard. You will basically eat the lot. You will keep drinking it. So I call it what's your kryptonite. So it's understanding which foods you cannot have portion control with, which drinks you cannot necessarily stop at one or two. Okay. Now, people have different things. Chocolates, bread, pastas, rice, um, it can be pizza, it can be wine, it can be beer, it can be multi-packets of crisps, it can be anything. But being self-aware about what are your trigger foods where you can't stop, sometimes if that's the case, the simplest way is to not have them in the house and not have access to them. Control your environment like we talked about last night. So that's one simple way is to simply not have them in the cupboard, not have them in the fridge, so you've not got access. And it means if you want a food or a drink like that, you have to necessarily get in the car and go and get it. You're increasing the friction to the act. Whereas if it's in the cupboard and it's easy to access, you're more likely to, when stressed, when mad, when sad, which we're going to come on to next, which is state and emotions we discussed last night, you're more likely to reach for these things, okay? Because they tend to be hyper palatable, devoid of nutrient type foods. So lots of fat, lots of sugar, lots of spices on them, or in, the, in terms of alcohol, sugar, alcohol, yeah? It creates that, ooh, I need another one to re replicate that feeling. So one can lead to two, to three, to four, one glass of wine, you finish the bottle. We've all been there. You understand this concept. So being aware of what are triggers for you is essential. Next thing is, like I discussed last night, is your state. Now, we talked about ways of controlling and changing your state because if you are sad, mad, depressed, angry, those states tend to lead to binging or having things that take you off plan. So we talked last night about changing your posture, changing your physiology, changing your self-talk and sometimes getting up and moving environment-wise, getting out the car, getting out of where you are currently sat if you're stressed, mad and angry, go a little walk around the block, change your state, put your favourite song on, anything that can help change your current thinking because remember you have a choice. How you think about external events is over to you. If you perceive it as good, bad, a lesson, a learning, it's all down to you. You can ask a better quality question about anything that comes in. Work-related, relationship-wise, financial, what does this mean? What can I do better? Rather than, like we discussed yesterday, why does this happen to me? That is not going to serve you and will lead you down a path of continuing the behaviours and patterns of behaviour you've always done, which has led you to what you've got. If you want a different outcome, you've got to change your thoughts, your beliefs and your actions. Thoughts, beliefs and actions. Those three have to change for a different outcome. Otherwise, your outcomes will always be the same. Okay? So, changing state matters when it comes to triggers because... We've talked about certain trigger foods and drinks for you, but if you go beneath that at a deeper level, it is your state and your emotion which leads you 
some people who read the cupboard and have one of those moments where it's like, oh, it's because you're stressed, you've had a bad day, you've had a row with someone, could be your partner, your kids, could be somebody else's partner. Doesn't matter, but something has triggered you, which has led your mind then to go down a path of, oh, whatever, doesn't matter, oh, I'll eat it, I'll drink it. So, like I've said, being able to scratch the record, as we talk about in NLP terms when I coach people, you stop the record playing. Because what happens is, an event happens, you get stressed, you then reach for the foods or the drinks, and you self-soothe and you sabotage your progress. Now, having them not in the house is ultimately going to be probably the best thing for you. But understanding how to stop yourself, scratch the record, ask a better question, stand tall, puff your chest out, put your favourite song on, go walk, do some burpees, jump in an ice bath, have a cold shower, do anything to change your state in the moment, ask a better question so you don't always reach for the things that you've always reached for. Because I'll guarantee you have a kryptonite, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three of them, that constantly throw your diet and your results off plan. And it's knowing what they are, trying not to have them in the house, and more importantly, having control over your mind and your state so you don't reach for them and you feel more in control and you can step back, choose a different course of action, ask a better question, and then not go down that road that you've always gone down when you get stressed, mad, sad, angry. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that again just reaffirms when it comes to triggers, trigger foods, you actually have control over this if you choose to. That's the key thing. It's over to you on this one. I can give you the tools, the tricks, the tactics and everything else, but you've got to remember you're steering the bus you're flying the plane, the direction you're going is over to you. Hope that helps.